If your liver is not quite working up to par, or maybe you've been diagnosed with some type of liver situation, the good news is, is that the liver is pretty much the most regenerative organ that we have in the human body. And there's steps you can take to help your liver work a little bit more like it did back when you were a whippersnapper. So in this video, I'm going to share the four most effective steps that you can take to help your liver function a little bit better. Also, people don't really say whippersnapper anymore. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. To understand the first and the most important step that you can take, we really need to understand how the liver works a little bit. So most people know that when the body views something as you know synthetic or foreign or, or toxic, that the liver will filter that out of the body. That's the liver's job. Most people know that. But what a lot of people don't know is the liver will take that filth that it filters out of the body and it'll put it in the bile that it produces. Bile is a soapy substance that we store in the gallbladder and we kind of use it to help us digest foods and digest our dietary fats and a lot of other purposes. But the liver makes this bile and it puts the filth in the bile and the bile goes down and gets stored in the gallbladder. But for a wide variety of reasons, a lot of the things that we consume and the things in our environment today have the ability to thicken up our bile so it won't flow correctly. So when that bile becomes too thick and sticky to flow correctly, now the bile is not continuing to move through the intestinal tract so that those filth and toxins can go through the intestinal tract and go out the back door when we poop like a champion. So this is the body's main detox pathway. So when this bile is too thick and sticky to flow, it's not going out the back door. All these toxins get reassimilated into the system and now the liver's got to filter them out all over again. The liver's like, hey, I did this. I got to do this all over again. Why do I got to do this again? Eventually, the liver's going to get overwhelmed, filtering out the same things over and over again, and it can't do all the other jobs that are important for the human body. So if your liver has dozens of jobs that it has to do, it helps us make our cholesterol, it helps us convert T4 to T3 for the thyroid to function correctly, it does a lot of things. And if it has to do one of its jobs, filtering out toxins, over and over again, filtering out the same junk over and over again, doesn't it make sense that it might not perform as optimally? Doesn't it make sense that the health of that liver would decline? Sure it would. So the number one step to help your liver come back to life is to make sure that bile is flowing properly, to take steps to thin that bile out so that it can move through the intestinal tract and take out the garbage like the body wants to. We're gonna come back to this in a little bit later and I'll give you some insights into how you can thin that bile, but this becomes one of the most important things to do when you want the liver to function correctly. A lot of the processed junk, all the grains, a lot of the foods and a lot of the medications that we use in our world today have the ability to thicken up that bile. So for someone's bile to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly, it's really common. More than half of the clients that I see have a significant problem with bile flow. And when we take steps to thin that bile out, all of a sudden the body's detoxing, the liver's working better, and the whole body can function the way that it's trying to function. Step number two is to change your carb and sugar intake. And this is a really big deal. You know, a decade or two ago, we never saw fatty liver issues unless the person was an alcoholic. It was called alcoholic fatty liver disease. And then we started to see these fatty liver issues when a person wasn't an alcoholic. And they were like, well, I don't know, what do we even call this? Oh, we can call it non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And the problem is they viewed this alcoholic fatty liver issue as like, well, sure, the person's drinking all this alcohol. It's kind of like a poison and the liver's got to filter it all out. So sure, that would cause a lot of problems for the liver. What they didn't understand was part of the problem with this alcohol was that it was a liquid form of sugars. Alcohol processes a lot just like sugar does. So in a liquid form, sugar hits our body much faster and much harder, which can create a bigger sugar spike and a larger insulin spike. And that high insulin creates a lot of inflammation in the body. So one of the biggest changes that you can make in your life is to remove liquid sugars. You're not seven. You're not, you're not in third grade. You don't need a juice box. There's things that you can drink that are not liquid sugars. So when you remove this liquid sugars, you're removing a huge burden. The body can only process a limited amount of carbohydrates or sugars and store it in the liver or tissues as glycogen to be used as fuel for later. 
Anything beyond that very small storage tank gets converted into saturated fats. This is the cause of fatty liver issues. It's excessive carbohydrates, it's excessive sugars, and especially excessive liquid sugars. Now the biggest problem is a lot of the sodas and things that we're drinking now a lot, are not the same sodas that we drank 20 years ago. They had sugar in them before, and now they have this high fructose corn syrup that's like sugar on crack. It's turbocharged sugar that hits your liver a lot harder than old sugars did back when they were natural. So it can be really important to remove these soda liquid sugar type things because you're not in middle school anymore, but it's also important to reduce your high starch foods. These high starch, high carbohydrate foods are going to spike insulin as well and have you turning a lot of those excess carbohydrates into saturated fats. So we like to see people use more medium carb foods like a sweet potatoes or yams or butternut squash. These are also real foods. When you remove these processed foods, it doesn't give such a burden on the body. A lot of the ingredients in these processed foods that we eat today are synthetic substances. So all synthetic substances that go in the body, the liver's gonna wanna filter them out. They don't recognize them as things that should be in the body and the liver says, well, let's get rid of this. But again, that's more work for your liver to do. So if you just put this stuff called real food into your body, all of a sudden the body starts to operate a little bit differently. It's able to operate differently because you've removed a significant burden. Hey, let's talk about another significant burden. Number three is to remove all vegetable oils. They're not good. You don't want to consume them. What you should do with your canola oil that you have in the pantry is walk over to your garbage can and just set it in the garbage can and see what it looks like there. If it looks okay there, you might want to leave it in the garbage can because it's not fit for human consumption. All these vegetable oils create inflammation and oxidation in the liver. So this is a huge burden on the body because you can't go out without having some type of vegetable oil in the food that you're consuming at a restaurant. So that's a problem, but that doesn't mean you can never eat at a restaurant. What you want to do is you want to get it out of your house. When you're at home, you can do the things that are optimal. You can do the things that are right, and they're just as easy to do. You can cook with things like butter. It's a real food. You can cook with things like coconut oil and, and bacon grease and beef tallow and all those saturated fats that are good to cook with. Now, olive oil is not as bad as all these other seed oils, but you still don't want to cook with olive oil because when you hit that type of heat with olive oil, it can turn those fats into a toxic fat just like these vegetable oils. So just lose the vegetable oils. You know, 30, 40 years ago, they told us that this was the healthiest option. We know now that it was a big mistake. Science has proven that it was a tremendous mistake, but it can take 30 to 40 years for information to move into the mainstream. So just know if this is new information to you, it's coming, but you can get ahead of that wave and get rid of it right now. And number four is to remove the need for some medications. Now, I don't want you to hear this the wrong way. This doesn't mean I want you to stop taking any medication that you're taking. Some medications may be keeping you alive. That's kind of important. To help your liver, you really want to be alive. But what's important to understand is that all medications are synthetic substances. If they weren't, they couldn't be patented and the manufacturer couldn't make billions of dollars because it's illegal to patent a natural substance. So since the liver's job is to remove all synthetic substances, for a medication to be able to stay in the body long enough to do the job that it's supposed to do to save your life or whatever it's doing, it has to overwhelm the liver enough so that enough of that substance can stay in the body and, and do its job. If it didn't, the medication would be worthless. So if you understand how that works, any medication that you use is a burden on the liver. Now that doesn't mean that you need to stop your medication. You would need to talk to a doctor about this, but what a lot of people can do is they can take steps to remove the need for some medications and then your doctor can help you remove that medication from your life. So if you're using like over-the-counter medications for things like you know allergies and, and pain relief and uh, acid reflux and things like these, all of these issues are things that people correct themselves every day. So if you can understand how to correct these issues for you, then you can remove the need for that medication. Does that make sense? You don't wanna just stop taking a medication without fixing the problem that caused you to take that medication. You wanna fix the underlying cause and then work with your doctor to get off of a medication when the time is right. But any person that has the ability to remove the need for a medication 
is removing a burden from the liver and allowing the liver to do all the other jobs that it wants to do the way that it wants to do them. Again, you don't want to just chunk a medication in the trash because you saw this video. You really want to do the work first to improve the underlying cause of any issue and then talk to your doctor about, hey, do I qualify now to get rid of this medication? So if you're dealing with a health issue that requires you to take medication, go to our video page and search for that topic. See if we've talked about steps you can take to start working on improving the underlying cause of that problem for you. So those are the four most effective steps. These are not the only steps you can take to help your liver. Like there's supplements out there. Milk thistle is very popular and seems to be beneficial for some people that are also taking other steps to improve liver function. But you don't need some liver formula. You don't need a liver detox. This is, this is not the way to really improve your liver function. Think about it. If you all of a sudden decided it was a good idea to go to the bathroom in the corner of your living room every day, you know, a new air freshener is not going to fix that problem. So you don't need a liver detox. You need to change the behavior that's creating the problems. You don't want to just cover it up. Just know that any real solution is going to take effort and that's okay. You know, the only other option is to get on a liver transplant list and just wait for the right guy to get hit by a bus so you can have his leftovers. That's, that's not a solid plan. What a lot of people don't know is that you can do this. You can take these steps to improve your liver function. And a lot of people will be like, oh man, I have crazy, insane cravings. There's no way I can give up the junk food. I gotta have it. But this is something that you can fix. We'll put a link to a video on how to improve cravings in the description below. If you're having issues like, oh, well, my mom cooked with vegetable oil, so I cook with vegetable oil. Here's the thing, your mom was wrong. Now you actually have an opportunity to tell your mom she was wrong and you're actually gonna be right about this. It was a mistake that we made. Just because a mistake was made and though you're set in your ways doesn't mean that you can't change them. You can do this. If your bile isn't flowing correctly and the body can't detox the way that it wants to, you can take steps to fix that. As a matter of fact, Right now, I want you to watch our video on five steps you can take to improve bile flow. And just by doing that, just by watching that video, you're putting yourself in motion and that's what it's all about. So check that video out now and let's get going. I can't wait to hear about your results.